scripture. So, man, it, it was so helpful for us as your pastors and your leadership here to hear your hearts and know what's going on. And our desire today and our plan today is simply to speak to that from what the Bible says. But we want to help pastor you through those moments today. So I hope you're ready for this. It's going to be it's going to be a great time. So uh, let's let's learn and introduce our panel. So we're gonna start over here with the unknown. What, what's your name, sir? Yeah, 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 yeah. My name is Bernard Scott, and I have the privilege of being the campus pastor here at Upper Ranch. Married 27 years to Elizabeth. Thank you for this opportunity to serve at this church. Well, I'm Jessica Gilliard. Uh, my husband and I camp our campus pastors at our Fruitville campus. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Super, super excited to be here. Uh, we have, I have two children that are almost 20 and um, 16. So y'all pray for me because we are in it now. So lots and lots of prayers. We are a blended family. And so I'm super excited to be sharing a little bit about that with you guys. So glad to be here with you all. Um, my, my name is Jordan Bazette and I am one of the youth pastors here at Bayside, and if I look like a blend of the people to my right, that's because I am, okay? Uh, those are my parents right there, uh, Randy and Amy, that's weird to say. Uh, I've been married for five years to my amazing wife, Sable, and we have an eight-month-old baby and Ruby, so yeah. Hey, everybody, my name is Luke. I'm the next-gen pastor here at Bayside. I have the honor and privilege of overseeing the nursery all the way through young adults ministries here. So you guys be praying for me, man. But uh, I've been a part of Bayside for a long time, 18 years now. My wife and I uh, have been married for 19 years. So as soon as we got married, we joined Bayside as just young adults. And we didn't know what was going on in the world. And man, we were so grateful to walk into this church at that point in our lives. Uh, now we have two kids, uh, two, we've adopted two children. Uh, our son Mace is 11 years old and our daughter Ayla is five years old. So, like I said earlier, pray for us, okay? You were a mess when you said that too, that's for sure. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so you guys ready? We're gonna, we're gonna jump into these questions. We have some video questions that were submitted, so we're gonna, we're gonna, have, uh, we're gonna have that as well. All right, here's the first question. How do I know that I found the right person to move forward with in marriage and in my faith walk with God? How, how would you know uh, that it's the right person or it's time? Um, I think I'll answer that for us. Um, so here's the thing. When we're looking for the right person or the perfect person, we have to understand that um, I, I don't know if it's really going out there and looking for that, if, if you know what I mean. We have to be the right person with the Lord. That's, That's, That's the good. most important thing is yeah. that first and foremost, our relationship with the Lord has to be what's right. And I, I don't think anywhere in the Bible it specifically says here is how to look for the perfect person. What I do know as a Christ um, follower, as a believer, I know that I'm not to get in a relationship with an unbeliever. That's what the Bible tells us, right? Out of um, 2 Corinthians and to not be une unequally yoked. And here's what I know too, is that if I spend all of my time focused on the perfect person or the right person, I might miss the God person. I might miss the person that God has for me because when I begin to focus on who that perfect person is, my own standards, my own expectations start coming into play. Well, I need this out of this person. I need this, and it becomes a checklist, right? And I'm too busy focused on that that I forget and miss the blessing of who God has for me. If they love Jesus the way that I love Jesus and our values are aligned according to his word and his will, then that's going to be the person that God has for me. I have, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to seek the Lord in prayer. I'm going to be, I'm going to listen yeah. for his voice and what he tells me. And I'm going to be obedient to that. But I'm going to set my, myself, I'm going to surrender myself, I'm going to die to myself, and I'm going to listen to what the Lord has for me. Because I don't want to miss out of the blessing. I think about my, um, when Willie and I first met, 
Um, and I, I wasn't looking for the, the perfect person. I wasn't looking for the right person, but I knew God had brought him to me. And so 14 years later, here we are with an incredible family. So I just want to encourage you to be the right person for the Lord, to, to solidify your relationship with the Lord first and foremost. That's a great, that's a great call. Also, don't look for somebody that can help you and serve you. You be on the look. I'm supposed to add value to them, that you complete them. Don't just look for, because that, that's selfish and love isn't selfish. So. How can I add value to them? Can I just add a, a quick practical thing that Randy and I did, and it really helped us, is we were dating for a while, and then we decided to fast each other for a month. And in that time, I knew I could live with him, but I didn't know if I could live without him. And so it was during that season that, I, that we just it solidified our love for each other and that we knew we were meant to be together. It gave a, it gave a season for our emotions to die down because we weren't. You know, just enamored in love with each other, the emotion side of it, and seek God, is this really the right person? So, yeah. All right, the next question is, how do you bond and blend relationships with fostered and adopted children? I'll jump. You looked right at me when you <laughs> adopted mean, children. She, she, she gave me the bombastic side eye. She's like, adoption and fostering. <laughs> um, I'll jump on that one. Um, Adoption and, and fostering, it really is a gift from God. It, it's a reflection of what he does for all of us. He adopts all of us into his family through our faith in Jesus. And it really is such a gift. I think of uh, um, Ephesians chapter 1. Paul uses language uh, that says adoption to sonship. And in those times, that was a big deal that Paul said it that way. Because it meant that it was a Roman legal term, actually. It meant that when someone was adopted, they got every right, every inheritance that a biological kid would have had in that place. So God does the same thing for us. It even goes on to talk about inheritance and all these things that God gives us as we enter into his family. So to answer the question, I would say when we're, when we're adopting kids and fostering kids, and if God's knocking on your heart and, 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 and kind of uh, nudging you to do that, I would encourage you to lean into that. Because there's, just speaking from experience, I've learned, I can't uh, express the time we have, how much I've learned about God's character uh, through his, and how he sees us as his children, uh, as I have parented and fathered my adopted children. Am I making sense here? Um, so if, you, if God's nudging you to do that, I would encourage you to lean into it. But all that to say, we've got to love these kids the way that God loves us. He loves us unconditionally. He is long-suffering with me especially. I mean, the patience God has with me, I'm blown away every single day. Uh, he, he blesses us. He protects us. He heals us, all those things. And practically speaking, that just takes a lot of time. So we've got to get in a rhythm where we can spend time with these kids individually. And, and through the normal things in life, we will bond with them. So can I, can I just ask a follow-up question? Because uh, I think this is important to the church and to the kingdom of God, taking care of widows and orphans. You know, that's, that's uh, even Paul said that. I mean, that's true religion. So we're talking about foster kids here and adopting them or, or adopting children as well. How did you get to the place where you even started praying to think about that? Is God calling us to that? Because... Our, our church is loaded with a lot of people, and so perhaps there are families here that could be a huge blessing to these foster kids, and I think we need to step up our game a little bit. I mean, we, we had an incredible thing that happened uh, several months ago when Roe v. Wade was turned back to the states. Okay, and everybody's like, oh, that's great because it's the sanctity of life. But that means we need to be the people of God that want to step up and solve that problem, which we need to be able to take care of kids in these situations. Okay. But I know that that's a really hard thing to do. Where did that start for you in April? Um, okay, so we, as, when I was in fourth grade, I went on, on a missions trip uh, with my parents, and um, we were in Grenada. I don't remember how long. I think it was two weeks. And while I was there at that age, God told me it as a fourth grader, you will adopt a kid from Africa someday. Now, as a fourth grader, you go, okay, well, you, you almost don't even process that kind of a thing, but I'm, I'm here to tell you there is no junior Holy Spirit 
Holy Spirit is talking to her children today. And as a as a 30 year old, I was 30 at this point, 29, uh, I saw that all come together in my life all those years later. And then saw miracle after miracle happen uh, to make that come through. That was a crazy experience. And the, uh, you guys were at the airport when we landed in Tampa. That was all so miraculous. Only God's hand could have been on it. So I guess when, like I was saying earlier, when God nudges you, when he shows you something, lean into it. Um, don't let fear stop you from at least walking through the door and exploring it. There are amazing families in this church. We have amazing partnerships uh, here at Bayside with organizations that help kids in these scenarios. So please, please reach out to us. We'll, we'll get dinner with you, whatever, just to talk through all the things. There's a million questions that come up when, you, when you're thinking about adopting. It's like, well, how do you even pay for this? And the state and out of the country or in the country and the, the birth parents and all the things. But man, God is bigger than all of it. And he has a way of, through providence, working it all for the good. Yeah. So many cool things come from this stuff. Yes. So if you're interested in this, pray about it, but then give us a call. We have a lot of partners, a lot of people we work with, and you can begin to gather information on that so you can have real prayer and hear from them.